four, three, two, one. Hi, my name is Harmon Wiltz, DeKalb Asbro Technical Agronomist, and I want to spend a few minutes with you today really talking about the uh, early stages of growth and development of corn and maybe hit a little bit on some of the things to watch for and look for. First thing I would want to do is remind myself kind of that, hey, what am I looking for? At the end of the day, here's what an awesome corn uh, crop looks like, uh, good even uniform ears, good even uniform uh, tassel development is really kind of what we're looking for. So that's the end game. So just as our Minnesota Twins go to training camp to kind of, um, you know, touch up, make sure their throws are right, the batting is just on, right on the money, um, their base stealing is fine-tuned, a bunch of those kind of things, we really need to do the same thing, and myself included. So we'll spend a few minutes uh, today kind of reminding ourselves, hey, what are some of the key factors that go into an even uniform stand in the growth and development of corn and soybeans. So for me, one of the very first things I'm looking at as an agronomist is really trying to establish a very high quality stand. And what that really means is even uniform uh, plants within, even uniform emergence, and uh, trying to eliminate spring sidewall compaction. And if I can do that, I'm gonna get the maximum value uh, from the sun, the fertilizer, the land, to give me a good plant, uh, growth and development, and a yield. There are, are, however, many different factors that really go into that. The soil moisture, soil temperature, growing degree units, what's the humidity level, those things um, at that particular point. So let's take a minute and just look at the seed here. Uh, if you look at corn plant as an amazing manufacturing plant that really has the embryos right down here. This is the thing that we want to protect, and to do that we have the pericarp and the endosperm really kind of uh, not only protecting that embryo but giving it energy to uh, really um, get going until its roots can actually develop. So this is a precious piece we want to take good care of um, as we kind of go forward. If we take a look at this, here was the seed right here and I mentioned the embryos um, at that point the first thing coming out is the radical. So here's the actual seed. Um, Here's the first, at the point there, um, the radical is the first thing to come out. And what we're looking for is kind of more of a white, lush type of root uh, system. It's what we look uh, ideal. Um, if it was brown, discolored, maybe cut off, burnt off, chewed off, that wouldn't be good. So we're looking for that nice radical that's white and lush moving out. On, from the top, more the top of the seed then comes uh, two basically seminal roots. And these are the feeder roots that really develop that plant and help it grow until we can develop some more. We have a mesocotyl and then the coleoptal point that all uh, play a role. And you'll notice there's a point up there, it's called the coleoptal point. And uh, one of the biggest things I think that we wanna do is be scouting these fields. So we'll go ahead and plant. Um, always be checking planting depth as you're uh, before in each field, because each field is, is slightly different. Um, and then scouting to see, hey, are we making progress? Are we germinating? Are we getting a little bit of a radical? How's that coming? Are we actually getting our seminal roots, and then, oh, by the way, is my mesocotyl coming straight up, and is my coleoptal point still a point? And if, if we're seeing plants like this in the field, they're healthy, they're viable, they're doing well um, from that particular point. Our next thing to think just a little bit about is, so what, what affects germination? Well, the plant needs to imbibe that seed about 30% of its weight and moisture before it can actually germinate. Um, what we're really looking for is an even uniform stand. So the more even and uniform the temperature is at the seed and the more even and uniform the soil is packed around it, that temperature at the seed is going to give us the best emergence, uniform emergence. A couple factors that affect that, just I want to give you an idea that if we're dealing with um, at the seed 50 to 55 degree temperatures, it's going to take about three weeks to get that plant emerged. If we're dealing with warmer conditions, 60 degrees or above, we can do that in 10 or 12 days. So some real factors that kind of go into that. Picture here, just wanted to kind of show you around uh, uniformity in planting. And what, what do we take a look at? So a picture on the left here was planted on May 12th in the soybean ground. And here's the even uniform uh, radicals that are coming out. Looks fantastic, very good. Um, contrasting to that to a field that was planted corn on corn on April 20th. Um, not as uniform and not as even, uh, but one of the things that happens is we want to plant early. Early planting trumps later planting in most cases as long as we're, we're pretty adequate. Early planting, we're not going to have 
a perfect emergence. It's going to be a little more up and down, but this field does yield more as we uh, take the earlier planting date, as long as the ground is fit and it's dry. So then from there, um, we take a look at soil surface. Where is this plant at? We've got the really nice radical seminal roots, the mesocotyl coleoptyls coming straight up. We've scouted and monitored it. Uh, we're right at the soil surface. So once that uh, coleoptyl point finds the soil surface, then it's gonna break open and we're gonna have our, our leaves. And that's where the leaves are all gonna actually come out of and come from. So the secret when we're scouting um, below ground is, do, is my coleoptyl still coming straight up? And is it not leafed out underground? In most cases, if we leaf out underground, just right near the soil surface, that plant can make it through. But if we're leafing out way down here and it gets twisty, we won't make it through. So the big thing is just scouting, watching that plant and uh, taking a look at it from that perspective. So planting depth, um, I like to be in that no shallower ever than an inch and a half to get good root development. Um, so ideally kind of that one and three quarter to two and a quarter in our research kind of shows that's kind of the maximum yield that we tend to get. So how do we measure that when we're out in the field? A couple of different ways. Here's that coleoptyl point that I just talked about. The soil surface is one sixteenth of an inch below that point. So we could get our tape and measure from there to the seed and give us planting depth. If we can't see that coleoptyl point yet, it's kind of broke off. We can uh, go to our, our nodal roots. Uh, measure up three quarters of an inch, measure down the three quarters of an inch plus for the seed is will give our, give us our planting depth. We're always going to see that nodal root development there. You can see that little bump um, created about three quarters of an inch below the soil surface. Some other key things to look at then here is uh, a little bit later in life than those nodal roots that I talked about developing right here. Um, we've got our base roots here, the radical seminal roots. And then as this plant gets a little bit taller, kind of in that V1 stage, it's going to uh, really start to develop nodal roots right here. Then the next step then is going to, you're going to be able to see the collar. So right here will be a collar. So this plant here is a, a one collar, so we'll call it V1. So, okay. Some other key things the corn plant is really good at that we want to watch out if we do have some adverse weather, some freezing, some tougher conditions is where is that growing point on that plant? And so if we take a look at it. Here's that coleoptyl point that we talked about. I've uh, take, dug this out, washed it up, slit the plant in half, and here's that coleoptyl point. You can see right here, there's a little thing that looks almost like a little tassel. Right there is kind of that growing point. So you can see it's probably a good half inch below the soil surface at this point, yeah. And that uh, tells us then, hey, if we froze off the top part here, had some other issues, um, and that growing point is still um, more lush, whitish, yellow. Um, it's still good, and we'll be able to see it moving, and that will be a good viable plant yet. So some of the factors, though, I think to take a look at in getting good growth and development really starts at the seed bed. You know, assessing the soil conditions before you plant. Are they really ready to go or not? And to me, cool soils are okay as long as they're dry. I'm looking for drier conditions to put that seed in so it really... The soil just kind of wraps around the seed and we get really good seed to soil contact as we go forward. If we're not in that position, if we're not getting those conditions, we're best to wait till conditions do get a little bit better. Even though it's difficult to wait, that, a lot of times a half a day to one more day is a really, really big deal as we look forward to it. Leafing out underground, if we take a look at that, there's a few factors that cause leafing out underground. One is normally um, temperature and uh, soil conditions, wet conditions, compaction can cause that too, herbicide damage. We can see a little bit of effect there than the previous crop if we have residue on top or uh, touching the side of the seed, those kind of things can cause some problems too. So those are some kind of key factors I think to look at uh, growth and development from that perspective. Let's move into soybeans and talk about beans a little bit, an awesome crop too. <clears throat> if we take a look at uh, early in the stage or planting soybeans, kind of that one to one and a quarter. I would go down to an inch and a half probably if we needed to, if it was a little bit drier conditions, but that kind of one to one and a quarter is about ideal planting depth. And the same thing with soybeans, that where that seed is, we want moisture and even uniformity and a good seed to soil contact is going to give us the best 
quickest growth and development and get us to emergence at that point. Soybeans need to imbibe about 50% of the moisture, excuse me, 50% of their weight and moisture to, uh, to get going at that point in time. A couple of things then if we take a look at in soybeans, really if we're scouting, uh, we see that seed to the root go down, that first radical. Uh, the next thing then is that hypocotyl, that round piece right here. That's the first thing you're going to kind of see coming out of the ground. Is that making progress? Um, and then um, also then here are the cotyledons, those first parts of the plant popping through. A couple of th key things is if we get a little cold conditions, we can see some damage there. Some herbicides, uh, pre's, can cause a little bit of damage there too. But as long as the plant continues and is moving up, uh, we're in good shape. One of my little tests is, is I do the little flicker test. And if this is swelled up and I flick it a little bit and it breaks, we don't have much longer in that plant. It's got to get through. It's got to emerge. So some things to uh, kind of keep in mind <clears throat> as we go forward. Um, as this plant then has emerged, a couple things to think about. Uh, one is there's those kind of leadings, that first uh, ones that push through the ground. They are tough. They're uh, uh, really kind of a, a, a harder type of a leaf, uh, thick. And that's where a lot of the energy is coming from until the plant can get some additional roots going. And from there then, uh, we have the unifoliate leaves. There are two leaves straight across from each other. And uh, then after that, we get what we call the trifoliates. Three come out at a time. On this plant here, the main growing point is right there. There's the new little trifoliates. Here's the new growing point here. There are axillary buds wherever we um, go ahead and have a, a, a stem connect to the plant, his axillary buds. So down here, we've got a couple, a couple here. We got So lots of different growing points and places that the soybean plant, once it gets going, if it is damaged, can create some new growth. And a good example is the next picture here. We had a hailstorm here, and here's where the cotyledons are down here. So we've got two growing points there yet, two good growing points here. The first thing I kind of look at when I have a hailstorm or something early like that, if my stem is good and solid and green and lush and it's not bruised and I have a couple of growing points, we would count that as a viable plant. The plant is, is good and uh, we're fine to go at that point. So in review, this is really what we're kind of looking for is that even uniform stand. Um, biggest thing I think is really being careful on what are the conditions that I'm putting that seed in um, and then scouting and monitoring. Hey, is that seed making really good progress, knowing the parts of the seed? <clears throat> and if I'm continuing to progress and make good progress, I get uniformity emergence. And then as I emerge, uh, again, the growing points, if we have any hail storms, any early frost. So hopefully that uh, I uh, gave you a little idea, some thoughts to think about and fine tune us as we go into the spring of uh, uh, growth and development of the early stages of corn and soybean and then what are some of the things management wise we can do to positively affect uh, that uh, going forward. So have a great day. Feel free to uh, contact your uh, DeKalb Asgrow uh, dealer and uh, for any further information. Thank you. Have a good day.